Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Tory MEP slams CBI for blindly backing UK membership. Croatia fails to reap fruits one year after joining the EU. And what the EU Commission president does. EU exit will harm UK, says leading British industry group. Plus, what's the difference between the EU and TTIP? Workers' rights? It's Monday, 14th of July. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the top story from our homepage. Tory MEP slams CBI for blindly backing UK membership. The Confederation of British Industry is blindly backing EU membership without any criticism or thought, according to a Conservative MEP. The CBI, one of the UK's biggest business groups, recently warned Prime Minister David Cameron that the country's economic success depends on the UK's full membership of the EU. The EU is our biggest export market and remains fundamental to our economic future, said John Cridland, Director General of the CBI. Our membership supports jobs, drives growth and boosts our international competitiveness. But David Campbell Bannerman, who represents the eastern region of the UK in the European Parliament, told the IB Times UK that the CBI isn't doing any serious thinking. It's just maintaining a position where EU membership at all costs is benign for the UK, said the former deputy leader of the UK Independence Party. He added, what the CBI really needs to do is look at all the options outside of the European Union in more seriousness. Croatia fest to reap fruits one year after joining the EU. One year ago, Croatia joined the European Union with great fanfare, sparking hopes that membership of the rich 28-nation bloc would transform the fortunes of the tourism-dependent economy. But as the anniversary looms, the hoped-for boom has largely failed to materialise. Croatia remains one of the bloc's weakest economies, married in a seemingly never-ending recession that has pushed unemployment to 20% and half of the country's youth are without a job. The Adriatic country of 4.2 million people has seen its economy contract for the past 10 quarters and only Greece, which bore the brunt of the Eurozone debt crisis, suffered a bigger fall in output from 2009 to 2013. In the first quarter of this year, the economy shrank further by 0.4% compared to the same period last year before Croatia joined the bloc. What the EU Commission President does The President of the European Commission is the most powerful office holder in the European Union. He is appointed, not elected, to a five-year position by the EU's 28 heads of state and government and confirmed, i.e. rubber-stamped, by the European Parliament. The President works as the guardian of EU laws and election to the post is closely linked with European parliamentary elections. The European Council votes for a nominee for President based on the results of the most recent European election and the European Parliament must approve or reject the nomination. The President first starts work six months after the inaugural session of the European Parliament. The President determines the European Commission's policy agenda and through his political leadership he plays a decisive role in the development of the EU. Now, so many people that I come across during our speaking events, and specifically the ones who are Europhile, haven't been given this information. Their interpretation of what a United States of Europe will look like is based upon the American federal system. But that, as I have explained many times, is an assumption, and an incorrect one. As this article explains, the EU president is a hugely powerful position, and one that none of the 500 million people in Europe have a voice on. That is a mechanism more akin to the old Soviet-style system. EU exit will harm UK, says leading British industry group. The leader of Britain's biggest business group has said that the country's economic success depends on it remaining a full member of the EU after senior Tories revealed that more than 150 of the party's MPs would campaign to leave the union in a referendum. 
The warning from CBI Director General John Cridland came after David Cameron admitted on Friday that he now faced an uphill struggle to convince the British people to remain inside the EU in the run-up to an in-out referendum which he has promised to hold by the end of 2017. Cridland told The Observer that full membership of the EU boosted British jobs, growth and investment. The EU is our biggest export market and remains fundamental to our economic future, he said. Our membership supports jobs, drives growth and boosts international competitiveness. Given that the EU buys its gas from Russia, its fruit, vegetables and coffee from Africa, coal from Venezuela and consumer products from China... These BRICS countries, the up and coming economies of the world, seem to be doing exceedingly well off the back of their trade with the EU, and yet I see not one EU member state amongst them. Somewhere along the line, the evidence doesn't fit the argument. What's the difference between the EU and TTIP? Workers' rights? Some of those arguing against the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP, can sound as if they're opposed to international trade altogether, or even trade per se, although trade just means buying and selling things to people. That isn't the TUC's position, but we're not yet convinced that TTIP offers the same rewards for working people as the European Union has. What we're against isn't markets themselves, but markets that are unregulated, that have no social dimension. Historically, that's the justification for the TUC's shift from opposition to the common market in the 1970s to welcoming Delors' vision of social Europe in the late 1980s, although that irons out a lot of detail. But some politicians, employers and private investors have a vision for both TTIP and the EU that is precisely simply a free trade area. Well, friends, here at the unit we're not wearing any of this horse tip. This is the same argument that was used to flounder the British fishing industry as we entered the common market. Oh, it's just a trading block, and Heath's insidious lies. There is no threat to essential national sovereignty. The opposition to TTIP outside of the mainstream media is huge. We're being contacted all the time here about it. TTIP is part of a corporate globalisation strategy that has a vision of world government in its sights. Once we've dealt with our internal funding issues and got the Unicor back on a stable financial footing, we'll be bringing you some special live table talk shows with guests to give you more background on this latest vehicle from the Bilderberg School of World Domination. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.